views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. You're listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with host Doc Martin. Stay tuned in or call in. You won't want to miss what's happening next. How do you step into your maximum potential? How do you connect your spiritual drive with your physical path? Stick around as Doc Martin takes listeners on a journey through the seen and unseen, the accepted and the unbelievable. Get ready to meet the maximum you the world needs on Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin now. Hey, everybody, this is great to have all of you tuning us in and turning us out. This is what we like to call a sneak peek at the up and coming series that is being launched uh, by Dr. Sharon Martin. We call her Doc Martin. So if you hear me call her Doc Martin, it is a term of endearment today. Um, This is the healing hour in Maximum Medicine Radio. Today, we're talking about synchronicity. But I want to tell you a little bit, if I could, about Doc Martin. And know this, all throughout this show today, or whether you're on Facebook or you're watching us through our app, you can ask a question, uh, Transformation Talk Radio, you type your question in, but write down this number, because every time you hear, this is the healing hour, um, or you hear that from either one of us, think I can call in. This is a live call-in show. And as a matter of fact, you know, Doc Martin said, I need to do another show. I want to do another show that is open for the listeners. And this is something she knew in every cell of her body. And why did she know that? Because this is really for her, you know, sometimes being human has its challenges. This is what she says. You know, our physical health falters, our spirits sag, our dreams don't immediately come to fruition. What is a person to do? So this is it. Welcome to the power of Maximum Medicine Radio and welcome to the healing hour. And what that means is that in response to energy, because that's what Doc Martin does, You know, she is a physician and a shamanic healer. And so her ability, whether you know her as an MD or a PhD, you also know her as somebody that is studied with shamans across the world. And her vision is to expand consciousness, to deepen our respect for earth and to dream bigger. And so she said, this is a show that I'm being called to do. And so today is the sneak peek of that show, but it is a live call-in show. And so we want to open up those phone lines immediately. And Benny will let us know as you call in, 1-800-930-2819. You know, Sharon, today, um, Doc Martin, today we're talking about synchronicity, and I'm really struck by this right now in my life. Um, You know, I think I've gone through a period of time where I knew that synchronicity was operating, but I didn't really give it the sort of respect that I think it should. But this is a topic that's important to you as well. I would love for you to talk about what synchronicity has come to mean for us in today's world. And it's great to have you doing this show. It's really, really wonderful to be here. Um, I want to just take a second and kind of amplify what you said. I got a download a couple of months ago, and it happens about 3.30 or 4 in the morning when I'm kind of awake but not, and perhaps some would call that lucid dreaming. And I was told that I needed to do a show, The Healing Hour, because I needed to reach people and steer them, offer some guidance. And Uh, thankfully, and of course, you've always supported my ideas, but this one really resonated with you too. 
And so these, we have two shows as a prelude to the healing hour. So I really want to encourage people, um, if you have an issue when we're talking about something, call in and let, let me see what I can uh, call forth to help you out. So that's, that's what I'm all about. That's my path of service, which um, thrills me to be able to do that. So coming back to synchronicity, to me, synchronicity is when we kind of say, well, that's a twist of fate, or maybe that's coincidence. It's something out of, out of our control, but it's not, I don't believe that it is out of our control. I believe that synchronicity is when Alberto Violdo says this best, when the universe conspires on your behalf. And what a shaman does, and I'm so grateful to have started studying that at least 15 years ago, but what a shaman does is lives in harmony with the rhythms of the earth, with, with the fluxes, with the energies of the nature spirits. And when you start to open up and do that, then all of a sudden things are flowing. And I think they always were flowing. And what you've done is really opened up your awareness of it um, and allowed it. Because we humans can have whatever we want. We just, you've got to allow it. Nobody pushes it on you. That's spiritual law. Yeah. You, yeah. Are, you are sovereign. So Pat, you've had You've had some amazing synchronicities, haven't you? You know, I started to think about this more often. Um, and I don't usually look back, but I started to think about, you know, I went from I would I have nothing to say about myself in a book to, well, maybe I do. And, you know, I've talked to you about this where I I help so many people write their books. And now these PR agents are saying, well, when are you going to do it? And it's always like, for me, I really don't have anything to, I mean, this is really what I tell myself. I really don't have anything to offer. But one of the things I started to do, Sharon, is I started to talk more about myself a couple of years ago. And, you know, the more I work with people and working with you as we go through exercises, I realize so much of my life has been a matter of synchronicity. But the other part of that is that what was it or what is it about us that can make us ready to see things when they show up, right? Right. To be able to say, hmm, I'm going to dial that wrong phone number, but you know what? I'm not hanging up right now. I Something about this call, I need to listen to what they're saying. Or maybe, you know, it is a job you take that shows up out of the blue because you met someone that you connected with once upon a time. Or somebody calls you and says, you really helped me 10 years ago. There's an event you should come to LA and do, right? And all of these and events- you, you had resistance at first. Oh, I was like, no, no, I'm too busy. I've got the blah, 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 moving into space, blah, 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 blah. We got to do this. And I did have resistance. And I think every one of these, I've had some resistance. But resistance only lasts for a certain amount of time for me before mm -hmm. I take the leap of faith. But I think you have to be willing to take a leap of faith. Otherwise, it's not synchronicity. No, because... I kind of see it where we all have our boxes where we're in a box of limited perceptions. We've all decided how the world looks and how it's supposed to act. And then you get a little whisper in your ear. You get that interesting phone call. You get the coincidence where you meet someone. They say, well, there's this group happening, such and such. And in your box, that has absolutely no fit. But your willingness to open and look outside and say, okay, and then you leap, whether the leap's a little one or a huge one, somehow that offers you opportunities and then you take them and then you realize the power and the force behind them, either your spirit guides, your, your ancestors, um, 
the angel realm, whatever you link into, they're sending you opportunities all the time. Opportunities, you have multiple destiny lines. And that leaping is your choice to get on one that maybe isn't familiar, doesn't look like the box of the room of the world that you've made, but you're willing to try it. You have the confidence to try it. And you say, even if you say, what the heck, or holy crap, here I go. And then something opens, something gets bigger. And I'm all about getting bigger. I'm all about stepping out. Well, I love this because when I think now about this one event, the, the event to LA, I love the way the universe spirit, whatever you think about how it shows up, because it wasn't going to be enough for me just to go. There was something underneath it that was going to require another person. And so out of the blue comes from this, this, the person that invited us, Jane, says, you know, I think you might want to do some interviews of people. And that was like, okay, we got to get Jessica a ticket, right? Because there's no way that I can be part of this and still run and set up. And so now we're moving to get Jessica a ticket. But when I look at the events, all the, all the doors that could have closed, everything from getting a plane ticket at the last minute to Jessica coming to finding something white. Now, people may say, why was this a problem? It's a problem to find something white in this part of the country at this time of the year. And I had called everywhere. And finally, I called Nordstrom's Rack. And I, I got this wonderful Hannah on the phone. And I said, I've got a dilemma. And I told her what it was about. And I said, I must have all white. I have to wear all white. Now, what would be the series of events that needed to happen to go in a matter of days from not going and not having a ticket all through to the minute of getting that? And so this wonderful person, Hannah, at Nordstrom's Rack, uh, spent a, a half a day to find me like 14 different outfits. And when you see the pictures of me, and I don't know if Kat, you're putting some of those up now, that outfit, right, came from two people. The, the suit came from the jumpsuit came from Hannah. And Linda's mom had given me the white jacket. And, and this is, these are things that you can't plan this way. No, right, and Sharon? who would have thought the two of the, those things looked so well together? I mean, it was, you know, we say it's meant to be, well, you know, do we really believe that? Well, if you open up and you see how many things land, things are trying to land on your behalf all the time. Just, you've just got to open up even a little bit, let's a little in. Yeah, we're going to take a short break, but this now we're talking about what do we need to clear? And this is what the call-ins for today is about. You may not be clear about where you're going or how you're going to get there, but what do we have to clear from our consciousness? And that's the work that Sharon does as well. You know, when we are talking about Doc Martin and we're talking about inviting this energy in for her to help us clear, this is the most important part that I've discovered around my own journey with synchronicity. It is the following. If I am carrying a ton of sludge, I will tell you that I will not be alert, aware, or have the confidence and courage to take that next step. When we come back, we're going to talk about what does it mean to be clear. And if any of you need to clear some energies today, 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. And I actually have a request to ask you for some clearing when we come back for someone. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. All right, good. Oh my God, we got it. You got to love Abba. Abba, you do gotta, Abba, you do Abba, gotta Abba. talk about timeless. Yep. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love Mama Mia? 
Okay. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Hey, everybody, welcome. Welcome to the Healing Hour. Um, this is with Doc Martin, uh, Dr. Sharon Martin. And this is a show you're going to hear a lot about. We are taking your call. Cynthia, we will get to you uh, shortly. Um, before we do this, I want to make sure folks have a little bit more information about you, and then Cynthia will get right online. For most of you, you can get a hold of Sharon Martin at SharonMartinMD.com. Pretty soon, you're going to be able to get a hold of her at uh, her new website. But for now, this is the best place to find out more about her. Uh, and I'd say in about a week, you're going to get her new website as well. So we're making those changes as we speak. Um, one of the other things that you should know is you can work with her directly, uh, whether it's a spiritual energy session or it's a clearing or anything else um, that has to do with healing and energy medicine. It is the way to go. And you can certainly do that with her. So it's going to be fun for everybody to find out more about her. Um, and we'll make sure we give you lots of information. Uh, today's show is about synchronicity, but it's also about clearing. And it's important for us to do that. Uh, as I said, 1-800-930-2819. Uh, we have two folks waiting, Cynthia and Donna. And uh, why don't we jump to the phones? Because uh, I, I want to make sure we get these folks some help. What do you think? Perfect. Let's roll. Let's roll. I love that term. I, everybody's using that let's roll term. I think I got to incorporate that in something. We need a sound effect on that, Benny. What do you think? You got it. You know it. All Cynthia right. from Issaquah. Hey, what's up? Hey, Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. Hey. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, so today is 24 months that my husband passed over. Mm -hmm. uh, he transformed. And I... Um, I, I saw a channeler over the weekend. I went to see Paul Selig. I've done a lot of spiritual work. I, I keep coming back that I want to go see the shaman in Peru, the queer, queer own shamans that came down from Carol. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I've wanted to do that 23 years ago when my mother passed. And now it's two years and I still don't have a job. And it's just, I still miss him, but. I can't figure out what, well, I'm trying to look at all the synchronicities and I don't know how to be in this world. Sometimes I just, I, I just want to go meditate and, and cloister up and just whatever my gifts are, I'm like kind of done. I feel like I'm kind of done. I, I, I had, I took care of somebody I loved, helped them cross over. I've had a lot of visions and, and people coming to me, but I, I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my energy is calling me to do. My own knowing, I'm confused all over again. And I just miss him. Mm, that's what I hear. I hear when, when people link their life force as strongly as those who love each other, and especially mm -hmm. when you really integrated with him in the caretaking, when he passed yep. over a lot of your life force went with him and yep. so you're not you're not this is not a criticism so please don't hear it as such the majority mm -hmm. of your energy field is not grounded on the earth and mm -hmm. that doesn't make it wrong but i just sense from you a very caring and intuitive nature and there are mm -hmm. things that you can impact on this earth if you if you choose to stay and one mm -hmm. of the the best ways to really pull your field back from floating off into the galaxy is to do a lot of earth work and a lot of connection from your umbilical cord to the center core of the earth you have tons of connection to the center of the galaxy but you need some more if you choose to stay. And this is completely your choice. But I just mm -hmm. feel that you've got an intuition and a compassion that we need on this earth right now. So please don't leave and pull your energy field back by doing things such as sitting, literally sitting with your root chakra 
on the ground. And in your meditation, meditate down to the earth core, central iron core of the earth. Call on the earth spirits to come and enliven you again. And the other one that just came to me that I don't know if you listened to my, my um, show, Maximum Medicine Radio, last month with Dr. Yap Van Etten, who's a master of the dragon energies. The dragon energies are mm-hmm. primal forces of the earth. And you can sit in meditation and call on those forces. Because again, thank you, Dr. Pat, for reminding us. What's not clear is you're a little bit stuck at the third chakra. You're wide open and alive from the fourth up to the top, but from the third down to the earth, is sluggish. And if you could work on setting up that channel again, so that you're really flowing from crown to root and use the earth and use the nature spirits and use the dragon energy to do that. And I wish you the very, very best. And let me just say this. um, If you want to schedule time with Doc Martin, because, you know, this is the work she does, you know, herself studied in Peru and other places. Um, uh, What is the phone number that people can reach you at? 717-658-2266. And please leave a message if I'm not able to answer. 717-658-2266. But Cynthia, I think I think this is doable. I think with your intention, you can open that channel up and you do have gifts for us on this earth, we humans. So um, I'd really like you to, to bring your field all the way back in and, and then who knows what's going to come forth from you. Yeah. But it is in line exactly what we're talking about today, Cynthia, because, you know, I think when I look back on my life, I can think about all the times that I wish that I knew that I had to clear some energy. And what that means is mm-hmm. it, it all, it, it doesn't mean you're not going to care for that person or you're not going to remember that right. part of your life. Um, what it has meant to me is that there's something that needs to be cleared to enable you to fully step into who you're meant to be now. Right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't dismiss anything you've done in the past. You know, what it does, though, is it dresses whatever that is that is part of you to enable you to then become, you know, who you want to become moving forward, because that is the light that you have inside of you that's shining. Otherwise, you wouldn't have called in. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I hope you do pursue this and get some work done with Doc Martin. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Donna, we're going to get to you in a minute. We're going to take a short break here. When we come back, for those of you, this is the healing hour. And, you know, this is part of Maximum Medicine Radio. And, you know, this is the part where Doc Martin has dedicated the entire hour to all of you. Uh, It's very rare that we we get a host that (laughs) wants to do that. Um, And do it in the way that is so supportive of all of your journey. And so you can expect this from Doc Martin on a regular basis, in addition to Maximum Medicine uh, Radio. Right now, we're going to take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. And Donna, hang in there. We're going to get. We're going to take you right on the top when we come back. We'll be right back. All right, back. good. At the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I said I scared you right there. <laughs> Did I scare you, Benny? Can Benny can't. Me. I don't think Benny can see us on the cameras. Because are okay. you on Zoom, Benny? Do you connect with us? How do you, how do you actually? Yeah, you're on Zoom, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can see okay. our pictures. Yep. Okay. He's, okay. He um, doesn't. The producers don't like to show their pictures. I I I said to Cat uh, and to Zach. Zach's our new producer. I said, "Here's me. You ready, Donna? I promise we're gonna get to you." <laughs> I'm, I'm like. You people, <laughs> get your cameras up. I got you guys cameras. And so I don't know if they're even using them, but it's like when we work together, right? We're always on the camera unless the internet's an issue. The, there, the, see, I turned it on for you, Pat. Oh, Benny, you got like an empty chair though. Well, it's because I'm There's not like sitting a, over there. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sitting in another chair. I can't reach it if I'm working the board. Right. So then Jessica and I were. Right, I'll we're, turn it around for you. No, well, uh, okay. no, I like that. I like that. It's the empty seat approach. Oh, there he is. You're not quite not yet, on you, yet. Benny. I know. I'm working on it. I'm only okay. got one hand here. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Where's the face? Right, there there right. he is. There oh, is. I like your beard too, Benny. <laughs> Thank you. It's a very cool. I gotta frame it better. But yeah, I just I got mine waxed. Is. I went and got mine waxed. So. Your beard? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little better right now. Wow. Uh, <laughs> All right. We'll no, All I right. did. I had to go get it. I had to get it on the bottom. But here's the other thing. So here's what I said. So they, they get the camera. So we're watching them on a camera. So because we're still moving in, all of our junk from the back of the room is like piled in the back. And it's like because we haven't finished. Put, I, I haven't finished putting the wheels in the file cabinets. And so here's the thing. And it is related to today. You've got to get your house in order. I was just thinking you've got you to no get clearing to do you. But but sometimes it's a physical clearing. It's not just right. an emotional and mental, but sometimes you've got to take action in the outer world. And so I noticed Kat does not have her camera on today <laughs> for some strange reason. We're producers. Uh -huh. I know you're producing talent. We're I know, talent. but we don't have that cool mixing board that you have because uh, we, we, we do software. Um, all right. Okay. Bye. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, bye. So somebody types me. It's messing with fate. Okay. Uh, who wrote that? What? Doc Martin is in the house. Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little more clear in my space today, but your space hard. looks good. Looks really good. Do we still have Donna? On the yes, phone? Donna. Let's get Donna, Benny. Was that say one more time, Pat? Let's get Donna. All right, she's there. She's holding. Hey, Donna. Hello. How are Hello. you, Donna? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm okay. I um, I called to ask for some clearing for some rather severe anxiety that kind of got me trapped for the past year and a half. And I don't know what it is. I don't know the origin of it. And I also, even through a lot of meditation and studying and reading and spiritual texts, I can't seem to get rid of it. Anything else around that? Um, well, actually, just very briefly, uh, three years ago, I went to Peru. I had the same anxiety when I went to Peru. When I went to Peru, it completely disappeared. When I came back, it was gone for two years. And then it came back almost a little stronger. Um, and I wake up with it. Or actually, what I should say is it wakes me up in the morning. So before my body is actually awake, my mind, with some anxiety dream, making a it's always about making a choice of doing one thing or another. You have to figure this puzzle out or something. But that's what wakes me up every morning. And in what way is it disabling? Well, it, it's disabling. And sometimes it gets so bad on the weekends that it just freezes me. So I can't. It's a um, shakiness, and then I can't get rid of the shakiness, and I try to calm, but I end up um, just being frozen. I'm trying to think of do a better you word feel for that. that but... you, do you feel that you're absorbing energies outside of you? I don't know for sure. That's what I'm, I'm feeling, is that, is that, either in all your meditations or your work you've done, you've really opened up, but that there's things that do not belong to you that are coming in, either trying to give you messages or trying to um, use your life force as a vehicle to be present on the earth. And it doesn't necessarily make it um, a bad thing, except in the fact that it incapacitates you when there's so much of an overload. I feel that you've got overloaded input and it doesn't all belong to you. And 
I'm going to sound like a broken record, but being physically present on the earth from one point is when you have your excess energy, it will sink, um, S-I-N-K, sink and dissipate all the excess energy. The more being on the earth, barefoot, sitting on the earth um, is a good, but you may need to find a shaman to check you for um, external um, energies that have taken up residence in your field because it's got you jumbled. And I have no doubt that that can be cleared. And I have no doubt that this is not um, evil to you, um, but it is jumbling you up. And as you said, paralyzing you because you've got so much input from your own higher self, but also from this other external forces. Um, and I think that, that the ways to clear by yourself are in meditation, releasing anything that doesn't belong to you, um, saying, because we are sovereign, we are sovereign spiritual beings, you may not stay, whatever it is, whether it's galactic energy, um, other uh, spirits, you may not stay actively connecting to the earth. And if you need more help, find a shaman who can help you um, shift back into the field that belongs only to you. Okay. Do you have um, any questions? No, that was helpful. Thank you. I think getting also clear in your intention, you are sovereign. You are sovereign and your field belongs to you unless you choose to let something in. And when you were actively seeking to be more open and expanded, you were in effect more open. But now you can say, uh-uh, I'm not open to all of you extra stuff. Get really, really clear on that. And okay. use, the, use the earth, use the earth. There's so much power there. Okay. Thank I wish you, you so the much. best. You're so well. Pat, I think you muted yourself. Someone muted you. Hang on. <laughs> Pat, did you hey, mute Pat, yourself? are you back? Yeah. Well, so what I'm waiting, yeah. While we're waiting for Pat to come back on. Yeah, I I'm back. Tell, oh, she's back. Are she's you, back. I'm back. Okay, good. I'm back. I want so, to tell a synchronicity. Well, let me just, did, did, yeah. Donna, if you're still listening, what I want to say about this is, Please get a hold of Doc Martin and, you know, explore this further if you cannot do this yourself, right? So I just want to make sure that uh, the folks that know that are calling in, there's only so much we can do in the time limit of a show. And so I think and it may that, take an individual session. Yes, exactly. Yep. So we want to make sure people know how to get a hold of you to do that. And that's for me. Give out your phone number one more time. 717-658-2266. Yeah. And don't forget, when we move forward, the healing hour is really a show for all of you. And I think it's very special in what Doc Martin is doing. So this is important for us to make sure that you know, and we're going to be telling you in a lot of different ways about the show, but you can look forward to this. Um, let's talk about synchronicity in, in, in that I've come to realize most of the things that have happened to me in my life. And there's a reason that people have called me lucky. They tell me, I mean, I shared a story in the last show, my table tennis coach yesterday, every ball I made, he said lucky. So maybe I am lucky, but let's talk about synchronistic luck, if we could. Because Perfect. I think that we are players in the game of life. Tell, tell us what you think. Well, yeah, we talked about the two things is really, really opening your awareness and then um, clearing out the blocks to going forward, which are probably of our own making. Self-doubt, disbelief, lack of faith lack of confidence and all of that. And those can take years to practice to um, be, have the courage and confidence to take a leap. Um, but I just was thinking about my path and um, the things that happened to me along the way that it wasn't until later when I was doing this energy work to 
reflect back and see, wow, look at that. So I was in, um, I finished college and I was working at the National Institutes of Health in the veterinary surgery. I always wanted to be a veterinarian. And then I had um, one, a professor from the nearby university was there doing um, a scientific study. And he said, oh, by the way, we have a graduate school. I said, oh, you do? So somehow I just was like, oh, okay, well, I'll go there. So I go, go to graduate school, and then I go travel to San Diego for my postdoctoral fellowship. Didn't like it there. I called, I called my former boss, and who was in Atlanta, said, do you have a job? He goes, oh, yeah, we just opened a position. So I go there. So I'm on the faculty at Emory there. And something didn't fit right. And I said, I need to hang a shingle. And I need, a, I need to learn how to ride a horse. And I need to have a house with a barn that I can walk to. So as we all struggle, I've had some depression in my life. And I was at the psychiatrist who never, ever, ever, ever told me what to do. He listened, never even guided me. And he said, I think you should apply to medical school. I'm like, no way, I'll flunk. <laughs> he said, and he said it so strongly. I want you to apply that I just did it because he told me and he never told me anything. And I got into Johns Hopkins. I was shocked. Wow. Anyway, so one, it's like people are there to steer your path. And I didn't say no to either of them. And then I read a book by Alberto that I saw his face on his book, he, uh, Shaman, Healer, and Sage. And I just knew that was a path. Um, anyway, so that's kind of you just you're going to get opportunities from places you don't even expect. And just try them at the very least, try them and have the confidence to know that you can completely go back to where you always were. Yeah. So it's not taking anything away from you. Yeah. You know, it's fascinating we're talking about this because I think one of the things we don't realize is when we make these decisions, we don't realize that we are in a duplicity of energy. We're in sometimes a one-way, two-way. We always think that there is, if I do this, I have no other alternative. Mm -hmm. I have no other alternative. It's, it's just this. But I want to ask you this question. Haven't you found that once you start on the path what I call it is the path of yes, right? Um, you know, there, there is a power to that. So when the Power of Now book came out, you know that Power of Now? Eckhart Tolle? Yeah. Uh -huh. I was probably one of the people that wrote an opt-ed, they call them, right? Some kind of opt-ed about the book. Well, the first thing I said is, okay, please give Ram Dass credit for his book on this. You, you got to do that, dude. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, yeah, you've got well, to because that that's seminal. the book. Well, probably most people weren't alive back then. You know, um, they weren't. But be here now that book and uh -huh. and my and and I had interviewed him. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a pivotal book for me. It did, yep. took me two decades to understand it. But right. But I said, I said, I, I don't quite get it. I said, can't we talk about the power of next? So I started a campaign about the power of next, but I didn't know what I was talking about. See, you're, we're talking about this now. This is what you're talking about now, because the idea of synchronicity requires us to embellish and, and absorb the power of now for the power of next. And I didn't understand the relationship between the two. Um, and it's a well, fascinating dynamic. Well, here's what I, let me add to it. Um, our, we are on a destiny path, which is like being on, if you have a flashlight and multiple rays go out, it's like following that one beam of light. The strongest beam of light is the one informed by your spirit that you are acting in concert with. So it's like stepping on the electric line of a train. You are totally juiced up because you're, that is your full soul expression. And Peruvian shamans say 
that the future is an energy coming in to meet you here. The past is coming from behind, pushing you forward. And then you're the center link. So as soon as you say yes, that future pulls you as well as the past pushing you. But if you don't say yes, it's kind of a sluggish little creepy crawly. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it is. It makes total sense, you know, because I find that there is an acceleration of the opportunities that show up. Every time I look at one of these, you know, uh, these points in time and I think about them, uh, I can trace back this momentum that builds. And it, I call it, you know, the momentum of synchronicity. And so for me, when I think about it, I like to have phrases for what I discover about my own life. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I shared a story about how I got into Claremont. And when I was done with the story, the interviewer said to me, because Claremont was my first choice for a school, but I applied to close to 30 other doctoral programs because I did not know what I was doing. There was no way for me to understand the process at all, right? I'm the only one in my family to graduate high school, let alone even take this on. And Claremont was my first choice. And I was rejected by the rest of them. And the school I actually was supposed to go to, Columbia, I sent the application to the wrong department. Think about that. This is the school I had just graduated from. And they literally said, we want you to continue here, Pat. Just fill out the application. And I sent it to the wrong department. And Spirit said, uh-uh. You're, you're not, not going you're there. You're not going there. You're not going there. And all of these other schools that I had talked about, and they were all those. And Claremont, the only time in the history of Claremont that the dean of the school was out of office and Cherry Granrose, Dr. Cherry Granrose, was the recruiting, whatever you call them. Mm -hmm. Her year, the only year they allowed her to do this, she brought in six of eight people that were like me, working people in the history of Claremont. I don't think they ever did it after that. And, and well, you know, that's that so was a window. Talk about very um, synchronistic or... Um, when I was applying to Johns Hopkins, because, because my psychiatrist told me to. Exactly. Um, the woman who was the admissions director that year, her only year, and Tony, I believe her last name was Horn. I could be wrong there, but she wanted a class of people who had life experience. So I went, I was 38 years old, so I was the only oldest one, but she didn't get all of the pre-med types, you know, all of those perfect intelligent students. She got writers, musicians, playwrights, as, and we were the most uh, diverse, um, eccentric group. That's it. But, but it, I think it, I think it mattered. I think it mattered because it brought in so much different energy. Yeah. And by the way, and you can talk to this because I know we'll have to do another show on this, but I know you can talk to this because you and I have worked together. Those of us that engaged in this program, we connected with people from other programs. The age range difference, I was like you, I was 43 and uh, actually 44 because I was put on a waiting list for a year. <laughs> And I wasn't going to go. And Linda called me and she said, I got this letter from Claremont. They want you to be on a waiting list. And you're, you're, you. And so I thought, I said, what the heck's a waiting list? What does that mean? Do I have to apply again? And I was so depressed about where I was, right? All I could do was take my dog for coffee on Capitol Hill in Seattle. That is, and ride my Harley. That was it. That's all I could do. And I was like, Linda, I don't really blah, 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 bleep, bleep, bleep it out. And Linda took that letter and sent that thing back for me. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you that a year, what was it, a year later or something? I get the, Linda says, you got a letter. You have to report to Claremont. And, uh, and I'm like, Linda, like report when? She says like, oh, in August. 
I says, it is June, no tuition, no place to stay. See, these are, this is why we're talking about this. I jumped on a plane to Claremont because I didn't believe this. And I jumped on a plane to meet with Sherry. And I walked in and I got down there and I said, hi, I'm Pat Basile uh, and you sent me a letter. And she looked up from her very busy desk and she says, yeah, I did. How can I help you? And I said, okay, so I'm in, the, I'm in this program. You have to know Cherry from Pennsylvania, my friend and colleague. And she looked at me and said, is there a problem with this? I'm like, I'm out of here. And so I get out of there. I look in the local paper. I need a room. I have no room. I have nothing. I need a room. And I find two people that have a room down the road in Pomona. I call them. I go over. I get the room. I get the apartment. So the only thing I didn't have was what do you think it is? Tuition. That's it. I am the queen of pulling out my credit card and I pay for the first year <laughs> on my credit cards because. See, I, that's, but that's the whole point. That's the leap. Yeah. And my leap was, was yeah. perhaps not as dramatic or. It's um, pretty, pretty dramatic. Uh, in December last year, I get an email from a person I never heard of <laughs> and a radio show, a network that I never heard of because oh. I'm, I'm literally out in rural Pennsylvania in the boondocks. But here is this young woman saying, I, in her surfing, somehow landed on my website. Somehow. She has no idea. She never knew me. But would I like to be a host on the radio show? And something said, don't ignore this. But I was kind of like, is it real? Can I touch it? So I got on a plane and I flew to meet you guys. <laughs> yes, you so, did. Is this real? But anyway, those are the leaps. And it, you might have to stop and get a little check, you know, get a little reality check, like flying down to Claremont to see Cherry to believe it me flying to Seattle to touch you guys literally to believe it. But here we are. Yeah. And this is really where we go with this hour. It's what is it that I didn't share with you that enabled me to make the leap? And that's what we're going to talk about as we move forward, because there's a body of work that each of us, you know, both Doc Martin and I, and all of you, those of you that have called in today, that is an action. It is, Please it? don't understate that because that is an action. And sometimes a phone call is the only action that you have to take. Sometimes there's more. But and that that's is, really the key, that right? Is, that is a choice to step on a destiny line. That is a choice. And that also enables you to open to the possibility that it could be different that they're opening to a new expanded awareness. And that's wonderful. And Cynthia and Don, I'm so happy you called. Thank you for that. Yeah. And I want to thank all of you for tuning us in and turning us on because, you know, there's more of this to come. But ask yourself this question today, please. And here's the question. Are you ready for your next yes? We're ready for you. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you thank next time. Thank you. See you next time. All right, all clear. Thank you. You've been listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin. Tune in next time while the doc talks health, spirituality, and the impact your beliefs have on every part of who you are, body and soul. Doc Martin unpacks the challenges we face as human beings and teaches callers to open the door between the scientific and the mystical. Expand into your multidimensional self. Learn how beliefs can set you free or keep you caged in mediocre health. To learn more about Doc Martin and Maximum Medicine, visit www.sharonmartinmd.com.